The chairman of the African Democratic Congress Forum of State Chairman, Kingsley Oga, has disclosed that the party would officially flag off its campaigns in Kogi State on the 20th of October, while it plans to hold a national convention tomorrow. Oga expressed optimism that the ADC was poised than ever before to win its elective seats in the 2023 elections, adding that its presidential candidate, Dumebi Kachiku, is making consultations. Now, Mr. Ralph Mosu, the Africa Democratic Congress uh, former chairman, had earlier accused the presidential candidate of trying to destroy the party through blackmail. Well, joining us to discuss this is Ahmed Bahari. He's the vice presidential candidate of the African Democratic Congress. Thank you so much, Mr. Bahari, for joining us. Thank you for having me, Marianne. Thank you. Yes. Um, let's start by talking about um, the preparations of the party for uh, the flag off of your campaigns in Kogi State. Now, of course, many others have started um, consultations and most, in fact, the PDP officially first uh, flagged off its own campaigns in Uyo and many other parties are, you know, doing their consultations. Um, but then I, I cannot start this conversation without asking. Your expelled chairman, your national chairman at the time, is saying that he wants to conduct fresh primaries, presidential primaries, being that he's saying that your party candidate, the presidential candidate that you're deputizing, has been expelled. Which is, is the ADC divided right now as we speak? Is there, are there factions of the ADC? Well, I, I'm, not going to, I'm not going to lie that there are that everything is all right with the party. Um, however, I think uh, from our own end, we've been mostly concerned with the campaigns and trying to see how we can win elections in 2023. As for the defunct uh, national chairman and the national working committee, all we are asking them for is to have an elective convention where leaders of the party can be elected through a constitutionally approved process as enshrined in our party constitution. Unfortunately, they're trying to retain power by not following the due process, and that is why we seem to be at loggerheads. Their tenure expired on the 21st of August 2022, and what we expected was a convention to be held, but they locked themselves up in a room and put together a kangaroo, a kangaroo-like uh, neck meeting where they gave themselves one year tenure and location. And when they saw us, you know, reacting to the falsehood of the fact that they had um, their tenure had elapsed and uh, they couldn't have done such a, such a, a, a process at the back of um, other party members, they quickly went again to Zaria um, in a very shady manner as well and uh, did a convention where Oli they attended and said that we've been expelled. Uh, once again, our names are on the INEC list. Uh, we're not expelled. According to the INEC constitution, the only thing that's going to remove the Mehdi Kachiku and Ahmed Buhari from the contest is if we officially uh, resign or, or die. Um, other than that, we are on the ballots. Hmm. Um, let me wonder, let me just, I'm curious, while other, I mean, we know that the PDP, the APC have had their internal issues, they're still dealing with it, we still hear that, you know, you know, moves are being made to reconcile parties, but in your case, is there a likelihood that the Ralph Morso faction of your party and you and the maybe's faction of the party will at any point be able to make a headway? Because I'm wondering, at this point where political parties are in consultations and trying to set the ball rolling in order to be able to woo voters to their side. Your party is planning another form of convention uh, this late in the day. How well will that sit with, you know, the other faction, especially if there has to be a handshake across the table? Oh, naturally, uh, this is politics. And in my, in my honest viewpoint, um, we will all reconcile. Things would have to work in the favor of those that truly have good intentions for the party. Um, I do not want to accuse anybody, but uh, clearly Rafa Wonsu has been the chairman of the party for 17 years. Uh, that is unconstitutional according to INEX regulations, according to the African Democratic Congress's regulations as well. So um, what you see happen in the party is just what happens in the country. People 
who complain about the leaders, who complain about people in elective offices, and then when you give them a small opportunity to take a position, you see their true colors coming out. I mean, party chairman of the party, national chairman of a party is a very small position, and Rafa Musa has been tested with that position, and unfortunately, he has failed. Um, ideally, uh, I think uh, when the matter is the matter is in court, as I speak with you, when we get our hearing in court, I'm I'm very sure that the judge is going to laugh at the fact that a man has been on the seat for 17 years and he will do the right thing. And I'm sure that at that point, everybody who has been con concerned about the party or confused as the situation might be would all come to the table to see how we can amicably move forward as a party. Because you've been saying this, every time we talk about this issue, you say, well, he's been there in the party for this number of years. But I'm sure that before you and maybe joined that party and decided that you were going to run for the ticket, um, you all did know that this man had been there for so long. Why didn't you push for this to be done earlier in the day, as opposed to allowing yourself to get the ticket? Then you say, hey, we want to address this. I'm just wondering. Could that not have been addressed Honest, earlier in the day uh, uh, when you before in, 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 this, in, before this time? In all honesty, I, I do know that he had been there for 17 years. Um, I think what what really triggered all of this was when state chairman. Um, you understand that there are state chairmen for every state. Uh, when Rafa wants to remove one of their colleagues from Abia State, and um, the state chairman got angry because they felt due process wasn't followed around the removal of their colleague and they came to abuja and put forward a resolution requesting that their uh, colleague be reinstated with immediate effect and also reminding the national working committee that a convention an elected convention is due to hold by the end of august as a matter of fact that was when we realized that he has been there for 17 years and when the matter came to do maybe it was a question of he deciding whether or not to to side with the state chairman who wanted the constitutional procedure to take place or to say, Rafa wants to just continue doing your hanking panking business. Uh, I'm not going to pay attention. I'm just going to contest. But the baby decided to take the side of the law and say that um, I think the right thing should be done. If you want to still contest by any kind of um, um, description you want to give to your legitimacy, uh, by all means contest. But don't sit in a room and, you know, single-handedly give yourself tenure and elongation or say that you have another four years for yourself. Um, you know, for me, I, I just think this is a done deal. Um, I don't think it's a serious matter to worry about this, their campaigns. And I think Nigerians are really yearning to hear what exactly we want to present to the Nigerian people, which is why I'm obliged to have this interview so that we can talk about the issues. It's talking about the issues, the average Nigerian voter who would be saying, well, let's look away from the big, normal big parties and look to parties like you. Um, what, what, what do you have for them? What, what, what should they be looking for if they're worried about the fact that there's some subtle corruption within your party and lack of internal democracy? What story are you going to tell them and how do you woo them to your side? I will tell them that Dumedi Kachiko and Ahmed Buhari are fighting for the truth. And at times like this, you expect Nigerians to, you know, side with who stands with the truth. Because it's not just an ABC problem, it's a Nigerian problem. It's maybe an African problem where you see people who have, uh, who have been supported to get into position of authority, refusing to shift ground simply because they do not want process to, uh, the process to, to be followed. You know, like I keep saying, I had discussions with some people a few days ago, and I said, the real problem with Nigeria is not whether we have good policies or not. It's not whether policies are changed every now and then. It is simply because the pattern has been transferred from one generation to the next generation at the right time. Anytime such a thing happens, a vacuum is being created because there is no way on earth you will not allow a system to be followed. The reason why we got into the African Democratic Congress was because of its constitution. And now for in the African Democratic Congress and saying that we are here to defend the constitution, everybody should be able to say, well done. Because ideally, we could actually sit on the side and say, you know what, let everything continue the way it's always been done. And probably, who knows, Rafa Musu is planning to negotiate with bigger parties like he has always done all these years and say, I'm going to pocket some money in my pocket. 
if we were in tandem with that decision that he has or that those plans that he has, you never would have heard about the situation. We'll probably just wait and cash out. We're saying no to that. We're saying we're going to the polls. We're saying we don't negotiate with anybody. And I expect Nigerians around the world to understand that what we're doing is noble. What we're doing is to fight and change every small space that we find ourselves, not necessarily even the Nigerian space. If ABC is a space that we would have to sanitize, so be it. Greg, um, a research uh, report by Yaga Africa talking about the fact that um, youth candidacy um, has dropped by about 6%. Um, it also showed in that report that the ADC seemed to be the most um, youth-friendly party um, across the board. And um, this means that you have more um, young people on your tickets who will be running um, you know, from, on, on different tickets across your party. How do you intend as a party to you know, capitalize on this? We're excited about the fact that um, we do present a young candidacy uh, the baby and I are under 50. Um, we have a lot of young people running across board. And I did say that um, it's important for us to recognize that nobody is discounting the fact that old people have got something to offer. And that it has got to be a blend uh, across board. And the wisdom of the old is needed. The energy of the young is also needed. And I believe this combination is what can give us the kind of Nigeria that we do desire. Um, we also realize that um, there, we don't have, across other parties, we don't have enough young people, you know, as we did in 2019 or in 2015. What do you think is responsible for that decline, aside from your party, which is a very minority? It's, I mean, it's just your party, the ADC. And, and this is not even the PDP or the APC that we would say these are big parties. We're talking about the ADC. So why do you think that we have less and less young people running for offices, but then there are more people in the civic space having or engaging uh, you know, in conversations and, you know, other things to as the election builds up to 2023? There are lots of factors, really. Uh, first of all, perseverance. Um, it, it's not easy to sustain the momentum in this space. It's, it's, um, it requires a lot from, from anybody who wants to contest mentally, physically, financially, emotionally. And if you look at the Nigerian space, young people uh, rather are... are fixated to the fact that they need to support older people. Culturally, we are a people that have been designed to look at our elders as more or as superior to our kind, our, ourselves. Mm. So you find a lot of young people believing that the older people have got better solutions, even though they have been with them all these years and, you know, nothing significant has changed. So um, for young people like myself, most of the support we get sometime it might surprise you that those supports come from older people who have heard the message and felt, man, these guys do sound differently from what I thought young people should sound like. So I, again, it's a plea to young people that, you know, nobody should think that these elections are too expensive for us to run. Nobody should think that we do not have the capacity to actually effect political change. I mean, I keep telling people, go to the nightclubs in Abuja. Today is Friday. You will find some clubs where young people will go to and spend about 100 million naira on drinks alone. Um, imagine you deciding to move such resources towards supporting young candidates running for councillorship, House of Assembly, and see how they can actually start changing the narrative in those spaces. But we're not thinking like that. It's a cultural problem that has sort of worked on the minds of young people believing that they cannot offer anything except they are being told how to get it done by the old people. Look at all the old people and, uh, and their spaces. They're being supported by young minds, young smart minds. Look at the private sector. We are all excelling in the private sector as young people. Mm. But when it comes to governance, the culture plays a role. Religion plays a role. And we are being boxed to the belief that we cannot do anything beyond what the older people have asked us to do. Mm. Very interesting. And as a vice presidential candidate of the ADC, um, what's your message to young people, especially for those who, as we speak right now, are seated on the fence? They're a bit, um, you know, undecided as to where to put their votes or even to even to, you know, participate in the elections. What would be your message to them? What the African Democratic Congress stands for, what the maybe Kachiko and I stand for is what we call the Patriot Act. The Patriot Act is a bill that we have designed and will make it our first assignment when we get into office. It is a bill that stops all public office holders from enjoying the privileges that they have not been able to provide for the Nigerian people. 
In other words, um, I think that we have lost the connection there. Um, I'll try again. Mr. Buhari, can you hear me? Mr. Buhari, are you there? Can you hear me? Uh, I think that uh, we've lost that connection again. But well, uh, are you there, Mr. Buhari? Can you hear me? Well, fortunately, we want to um, say thank you to Mr. Buhari. He's the vice presidential candidate of the... Okay, I think he's back. Uh, Mr. Buhari, we lost you for a second. Quickly, in closing. I can, I can hear you if you're ready for me. Yes, I am. Quickly, in closing. Okay, in closing, pay attention to what the candidates are saying and um, don't get carried away by sensational statements. Ask probing questions that can tell you exactly how those things can be done not just as statements, but as true plans that have detailed um, stretches into how um, they can be achieved. Okay. Well, Ahmed Buhari is the vice presidential candidate of the African Democratic Congress at the ADC. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Always a pleasure. All right, well, that's it on Plus Politics tonight. Before we go, we leave you with the highlights of the week. In case you did not catch up, well, here's a quick one for you. I am Mary Anacone. Don't forget, if you registered for your PVC between July and, of course, uh, this time of the year, your PVCs are ready. From between June, actually, uh, till now, your PVCs are ready. And if it's not ready now, it might be ready in November. But go pick up your PVC because that's your passport to a new Nigeria. I'm Mary Anacom. Have a great weekend. APC has a law abiding citizen and party taught it fit to wait and not do anything that was going to have the semblance of a campaign. Um, while others had done that before September 28th, we thought in our wisdom that we should wait to the campaign. So, and that is why before yesterday, there have been a series of these walks in the Baton the Queen in Lagos, and yesterday another, uh, led by one of our supporters that is there, um, um, chief uh, so what we saw yesterday is not the official party rally. So what is happening now is that the campaign has officially started and the APC itself is ready to get involved. And it has been developed. Like, like on Sunday, the women had their own work. Um, also in Lagos, we have a number, number of women, a number of crowd, embarked on the long road to Lagos to show support for the candidacy of the world we call the city one, as you are to see So that is what we say, and uh, that is what you saw yesterday, which is just a demonstration. I could say in a popular panel, we have still tested the bike. We will be able to sustain the movement if we're able to move beyond just this, this 2020. We need to move beyond just you know, the fact that it's February, March, we're voting for a new president and new, and new governors and senators. So the fact that even when people get in there, how do we engage them on the day to day? You know, so moving beyond just who you're voting for, the party you're voting for, you know, accountability on the day to day, asking the important questions and asking them without bias. Or without sentiments to someone from your region or someone from your party, but just being, you know, just just being honest with ourselves that okay, this is this is this is the amount of money we have. You know, why are we spending on X, Y, Z, and how can we make our country better? I think just that day-to-day -day engagement, you know, will help to make things better. And I think that's the only way we can sustain this whole this whole thing. I don't think the momentum the momentum from ends has died. I think it kind of like metamorph metamorphed into you know what we have now with the registrations and people getting involved with elections and everything and i think that if we want to keep this movement going you know and not just kill everything we need to first ensure that elections are free and fair that when, when people actually come out to vote you know their votes count 
And even when the eventual leaders emerge, you know, they become accountable to the people. They don't just lock up and, you know, <laughs> and just, and just get, get lost. Right now, they are moving all across the country, engaging people at stadiums, you know, asking questions, making promises. But when you eventually get in there, would you still be willing to answer questions? You know, so if you're in a situation where a president cannot have a media chat for eight years, that's, that should never be happening in 2022. You know, so we want a situation where people are accountable to, to the people who voted them in and are able to keep the conversation going. The first of which is as of assembly made a mistake. The old progressive program, even if they do not exist in the I tell you that because I was what would have what would have been their duty as an opposition government would have been to test the powers of the government in court. You know, this is not it's very big, very bad for people to use avenues like yours to grandstand. You know, the jurisprudence has to be closed. What uh, uh, when the Soviet airline and the stand would have done would have been to go to court to challenge the governor's SSC, assuming though not possible. It is that, that he has achieved that the lesson was never government. 